Hi, good afternoon. Um, so this is joint work with Stefan Candro, Kai Vetter, and Avdi Zakor. So the goal of this project is to extract semantic information by fusing together information from multiple modalities, namely images and 3D LiDAR scans. The types of semantics we're interested in are, um, for example, building, sky, road, as well as object classes such as pedestrians, cyclists, and signs. Some challenges with this problem are that we'd like to incorporate information effectively from multiple scales, and we'd also like to fuse together information from multiple modalities which may have some non-overlapping sensor coverage. Here is a top-level um, diagram of our pipeline. We take a late fusion approach for our algorithm, which means that we first process the images and point clouds separately. We do a multi-level segmentation and feature extraction and learn a random forest classifier on top to get a unimodal classification. From there, we train an additional late fusion classifier, which fuses the unimodal predictions to get a final prediction. And from there, we add a, a final post-processing CRF, which boosts performance by a little bit and helps enforce uh, spatial consistency in our prediction. There's been some previous work in this area. Uh, Sengupta et al. and he and Upcroft did the semantic segmentation purely in the image domain. To use 3D information, they then projected the semantic segmentation from the images from multiple frames into 3D and reconciled any differences by doing majority voting. A year later, Kadena and Kashka actually did use features from both the image and point cloud domains. Um, with an emphasis on speed. So they used an early fusion approach and stuck to very simple descriptors in these two, do two domains. Additionally, previous methods also stuck to um, a single segmentation which only used image level information. On the other hand, for our proposed method, we use multiple segmentations from both the image and point cloud domains. We use a late fusion approach which en enables us to use um, descriptive features on both the image and point cloud domains. Uh, so the reason we do segmentation is that um, treating each pixel or point in the point cloud separately is very computationally intensive. So it helps to first group similar pixels or points together. However, if you stick to a single segmentation and commit to it early in the pipeline, this may result in um, over or under segmentation errors, which then you're stuck with. As a result, we make the design decision to use multiple segmentations to get uh, multiple levels of super pixels or super voxels. So in this example, the top is an example input image. Um, the middle is a fine segmentation, and the bottom is an example coarse segmentation. <coughs> we can take a similar approach on the 3D point cloud side. Um, we get a finer segmentation by doing super voxels, finding super voxels, where we group points into um, regions that are approximately equally spaced. For the more aggressive segmentation, what we can do is look at the point cloud, estimate the ground plane, take it out, and then group the remaining points um, using connected components. Um, at this point, for each of our super pixels or super voxels, we extract um, different hand engineered features, and these are the kind of things that, that were done before um, the deep learning era. So um, on the image side, we can extract size, shape features, position, color histograms, high dimensional SIP descriptors, and some contextual descriptors as well. On the point cloud side, we can do similar things, but here, of course, we have 3D information, which means that we can look at the 3D size on the shape, whether it's a linear, planar, or very scattered region. Um, the position of that region relative to the ground plane, as well as its orientation and some high dimensional um, descriptors, in this case, spin images in, in 3D. Now, an important design decision to make is whether to use early fusion or late fusion. Um, so here we'll show what an early fusion approach would, would take. So it's important to keep in mind that these two modalities do not have 100% overlapping sensor coverage. For example, in the image, the top quarter is actually not covered by the LiDAR scan because it is too high in elevation. For that region, we can train um, a classifier to directly map the image features onto our label space. On the other hand, for the point cloud, uh, we receive 360 degrees of coverage in azimuth, but the image is only frontward facing in this case. So in the other um, portion of the point cloud, we only have point cloud features, and we can learn uh, a mapping from the point cloud features onto the label space. And then finally, we have a region that is overlapping. And here we can look at the joint feature space between the two modalities and learn a classifier uh, on that onto the label space. Now, one problem with this approach is that we actually have a much larger feature space and much less training data. So um, this portion of the learning problem is actually much more difficult. On the other hand, we take a late fusion approach. This means that we first process the images and point cloud separately to get a unimodal 
or um, image or point cloud only segmentation. We then look at the region with overlapping sensor coverage. We concatenate the predictions from the individual modalities, and this serves as a mid-level feature for us, which we learn another um, post-processing, or sorry, a late fusion classifier on top to map to the original feature space. So the unimodal predictions in this case serve as an effective and compact uh, mid-level feature for us to work with. So here's some uh, qualitative examples of our algorithm. Now on the left, we have a unimodal prediction using just the point cloud information on top and the image information on the bottom. The first step to towards fusion is we need to uh, map the point cloud predictions onto the image plane. And we can do this because we assume that we know the extrinsic calibration between these two sensors. Um, notice that the top quarter of the image is actually not covered by the point cloud because it's too high in elevation. But for the rest of the image, uh, we can train a late fusion classifier to, to merge the predictions from earlier, from earlier um, in the algorithm. And we see some um, interesting improvements here. So if you note this encircled person, it's actually correct in the point cloud domain, but incorrect in the image domain. And after fusion, um, our prediction is now, now more correct. But even more interesting things can happen. For example, this region in ground truth is actually a sidewalk. But you should note that we actually get this incorrect in both the point cloud and the image. So in the point cloud, we have it classified as road. And on the image side, we have it classified as a building. However, you should note that um, what we're feeding into the late fusion classifier is actually the two soft distributions. And so after uh, concatenating them, the late fusion classifier is actually able to learn that this region belongs to a sidewalk. Finally, we add a um, post-processing CRF, which helps enforce uh, spatial consistency and gives a small um, boost in performance as well. So here we have some quantitative uh, evaluations of our algorithm before and after fusion. Um, so these are three confusion matrices. On the left and middle, we have our unimodal predictions from the point cloud and images um, individually. And on the right, we have the performance after fusion. So most of the um, object classes get a, a fair boost. So for example, uh, encircled is the building class, which gets in the 70s on the point cloud and image domains. But after fusion, we're into the 90s. However, you can see more interesting th cases. For example, here for fence, um, it performs very poorly in the individual domains at 20 and 3%. But after fusion, we actually get 42%, which is higher than those two added together. So how is it doing this? Well, actually, underneath the hood, um, the random force classifier is free to learn different modes of failure from earlier in the system, and it's able to recover from that. For example, um, here it learns that in the point cloud, if something looks like um, si a sidewalk, but on the image it looks like road, in actuality it may be, may be a fence. Okay? So here we, um, to validate our algorithm, we trained and tested on the Kitty data set, which we augmented with our own additional annotations. So we took eight sequences and annotated 252 images um, across them in both the image and the point cloud side. We then split them into four sequences for training and four for testing. Uh, so we compared to a previous state-of-the-art algorithm, which is uh, Kadena and Kashka, um, and they use information and features from both the 2D and 3D side in an early fusion approach. Um, so the metrics here are global per pixel accuracy. Um, so this, um, this um, Metric is commonly used, but it's also um, deeply flawed, and that is dominated by object classes which are very common, such as um, building and vegetation and road. Um, so we also report an average class-wise accuracy, which is um, commonly done as well. So when we use our algorithm with only um, image level features, because we're using more descriptive uh, features, we get numbers that are about on par with uh, Kadena and Kashka. When we fuse, um, fuse in information now from the 3D side in our algorithm, we actually get a, a fair boost in performance, about a quarter reduction in our errors. Um, and so this is, um, this is very encouraging. And finally, we have a post-processing CRF um, that helps enforce spatial consistency and improves performance. OK, so at this point, I'd like to uh, propose some future work um, in bringing this algorithm into the deep learning era. So we know from recent years that if you take your problem and reformulate it into something that's end-to-end -end and differentiable, and you toss a lot of data at the problem, um, you can really let the, the uh, network do the work here. So how can we fit this um, 
this sensor fusion problem into, into this paradigm. Okay, so we see that we have a lot of kind of hand engineered steps like the segmentation and the feature extraction. On the image side, we, can, we know that we can replace this with kind of some well-known tricks, right? So we can take a CNN, pre-train it on ImageNet, take the network, copy the weights over, restructure the network to produce dense outputs using some well-known tricks, and then fine-tune the network um, to our specific data. Now what's more challenging is how do we um, do this on the three-dimensional side? So the first order of business is how do we um, restructure the data into something that's a grid that we can produce or perform convolutions over. So at first, the point cloud seems to be just an unordered list of 3D points. However, we can consider that the point cloud was acquired using a stack of lasers that were um, swept in, in uh, 360 degrees in azimuth. So from there, we can actually think about restructuring this data into um, some sort of grid that we can uh, learn a CNN on top. The next order of business is that we actually don't have a large, um, like an image net for 3D point clouds. Right, so how do we go ahead and train um, a CNN on top of that? Well, fortunately, um, this year in CVPR 2016, Saurabh Gupta has some work on uh, cross-modal distillation, um, and he applied this to connect data. And what this does is, um, this work does is it leverages a pre-trained, um, rich um, image CNN with paired image and 3D data to learn a CNN that... Oh, excellent, okay. Um, so we can use this um, type of approach as well on the 3D side and, and see how that works. And finally, for the um, late fusion and for the post-processing CRF, we can also um, reformulate these steps as something that's deep and end-to-end -end differentiable. And so ultimately, we'd like to be able to bring this um, algorithm and this kind of approach into the deep learning era. Um, so please come by our poster for additional details. Um, my rabbit got to this one, but we have another copy for you guys. Okay. <laughs>